A little math Every day Is good for everybody Mad Maddox in the house <laughs> Hi, I'm Mad Maddox And I'm in the house In the house I'm really glad you could join me today Because I'm about to go on a math adventure And as I always say we learn better when we learn together. Together, that's right. And that's why I bring Curly Carl with me on my math adventures. He's really great to talk to whenever we come across a problem that we don't know how to solve. Sometimes just talking about the problem will help show the way. When we have new ideas, it helps to tell someone about them to really kind of unpack what we're thinking and to bring our strategy to life. So if we're all here, I'm here, you're here, Curly Carl is here. Uh, I don't see Ondu Toi Cat. Where is Ondu Toi? Ondu Toi! Oh, Ondu Toi! Bonjour! Oh, <laughs> here she is. Uh, great to see you, Ondu Toi. Merci, comment ça va? Oh, I'm doing quite well, thank you very much. Uh, are you ready to go on a math adventure with us today? Oui, mais tu as oublié quelque chose. What did I forget? Le numéro du jour. Of course, the number of the day. How could I have forgotten the number of the day? Is that what you have right there in your paws? Eh hey, oui. May I see may I see the number of the day, please? Certainement. Et c'en est une bonne. Oh, it's a good one this time, is it? Oh oui. Ooh, is there such thing as a bad number? <laughs> no. Alright, let's have a look. The number of the day. Ooh, it is a good one. Number of the day is one hundred! Le numéro so <laughs> That's a great number. It's very big, isn't it? I wonder what a hundred looks like. On du toi, can I lay you down in your seat while we see what a hundred looks like? Certainement. All right, I'm going to lay you down over here, and you're going to hang on to the number of the day for us. Is that okay? Oui. All right, merci, on du toi. Au plaisir. One hundred. What does a hundred... I have one hundred markers here. And I could do a lot of coloring with one hundred markers. That's a lot of different colors. And... It sure is a big number. I wonder what else we have in 100. That's not in your way there, is it? No, okay. it uh, Oh, oh, I have in one of my prize collections here of my trading cards, I have 100 of them. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven full pages. And with nine on each page, well, that's eleven groups of nine. 11 groups of 9 is 99, which means I need one more to make 100. So I have 100 cards in my collection here. Oh, and if you've ever played Snakes and Ladders, you've seen 100, because there's 100 spaces on the game board, and it's organized by 10 groups of 10. So we have 10 going across the top, and 10 rows of them, which means we have 100 spaces. That game's a lot of fun, but it's a lot of spaces. Sometimes it takes a long time if you keep getting stuck on those pesky snakes. So it, it's a big number, isn't it? What do you mean it doesn't have to be? Carl, what do they mean that 100 doesn't have to be a big number? Oh, that's why you have the Cheerios there today. Carl says that 100 Cheerios is not a lot, and I think, I think he's right. But now 100 pizzas, that's... I'm just kidding. I don't have a hundred pizzas because that's a crazy number of pizzas. That's a big number. Oh, il y a cent cents dans un dollar. On du toi says that there's a hundred cents in one dollar. You're right. That's another example where a hundred is kind of small. Now a hundred dollars. I don't have a hundred dollars lying here because that's a crazy amount of money. And a hundred can be small when we're talking about pennies. It can be big when we're talking about dollars. It can be small when we're talking about Cheerios. It can be big when we're talking about pizzas. So I guess 100 can be big and small. I wonder if other numbers are like that. I just said the magic word. I just said wonder. Wonder. I love that. Let's try that again. I just said wonder. Wonder. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. So it's time to put on our notice and wonder goggles. You don't have a pair? 
I think you do. It can be anything that allows us to look at our surroundings, look at the world around us, notice interesting things, and ask really good questions. So our notice and wonder goggles can be anything from our regular everyday glasses, some sunglasses. If you have cardboard tubes, you can use them, or even your hands. I've got a super special set of notice and wonder goggles with me today. We're ready to blast off into adventure. I notice that there's a lot of stuff on my desk today. I wonder who's going to clean all of this up. I notice Carl has brought his piggy bank with him today. Carl's wondering if he has enough in his piggy bank to buy the super suit that he's been si- Carl, you geometric genius. I think you found our math adventure for today. Here's what I want you to do so that you can join us. Carl has been saving up for a super suit at the supermarket, and today it's on sale for $10. Can you believe it? So, do you want to do some super shopping with us? This flyer from the supermarket is available in the show notes down, uh, down just below. So click the link, download it, print it off if you like, and we're going to see what we can buy with the money that we have in Carl's piggy bank. Or maybe you have your own piggy bank. Don't smash it like they do in the cartoons. Sometimes there's a little plug underneath that will help you get to some of your coins. Or if you have any spare change lying around, even some Monopoly money or some play money will be great fun to play with as we go on this math adventure. So I'm going to let you hit the pause button and go find those hundred things. And sorry, not a hundred things. You were looking for some money, weren't you? While you, I was paused, I, I kind of forgot where I was for a second there. I never know when you're going to pause the video. <laughs> so, now that we're ready to go, let's look at this piggy bank. We're going to put our Notice and Wonder goggles back on, and we're going to have a look at all of these coins. Hmm. 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 Oh, that's a really good thing to notice. You notice that they're all silver, but a couple of them are kind of this brownish copper color. You notice that there's different sizes. I wonder if the bigger the coin is, the more it's worth. Hmm, I don't know if that's true. But all of the different sizes, I notice, have different numbers written on them. This one here is worth 25 cents. So, I wonder how we're going to add all of these coins up. Let's pause the video one more time. This is where I want you to talk to your fellow math adventurer and come up with a strategy. How are we going to count all of these coins? And how are we going to figure out if we have enough money to buy Carl's super suit? So go ahead and... Pause the video. Wow, that was fast. You paused the video again. Of course you did. All right, let's take off these things because they're hurting my eyes a little bit. And let's have a look. Now, I have a strategy that I think might work. I'm going to start just counting them all together. So 25, 35, 40, and 41, and this is going to take a really long time, and I'm probably going to lose my place somewhere along the way. I don't think this is a very good way to count. So, Carl, what do you think? Do you have a different strategy? I think I see someone at home, too, doing the same strategy. That's a really great idea. Carl says that we're going to use the number of the day and the fact that Ondutois told us that there is 100 cents in every dollar, and we're going to group our coins According to that we're gonna group them into into dollars so we're gonna start with the dimes because we like ten groups of ten that's a pretty nice way to get started so we're gonna take these dimes and each dime as you can see the one with the sailboat on it is worth ten cents so if I get ten of these well that'll be a hundred cents and that will be a dollar so Carl this might take a second do you want to hit fast forward for us Hmm, I have 
one, two, three, four groups of 10 dimes. And as we said, 10 cents for each dime, that means each of these groups of 10 is $1. So we have $1 here, $1 here, one more here, and one there. Now, I have a couple of dimes left over, but I'm gonna switch gears here because I know that these nickels are worth five cents each. So, you're right, you're right there with me, aren't you? Each dime is worth two nickels. So, instead of a group of 10 dimes, I'm gonna make a group of 20 nickels. You ready to go with that fast forward button again there, Carl? This again might take a second. So, instead of a group of 10 dimes, I have a group of 20 nickels. Each one is worth half as much, which means I need twice as many. Now, I've got these other big ones here with a moose on it. And as we can see, this one's worth 25 cents. So that's like having a full row here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So that means to make one dollar, I'm going to need one, two, three, four mooses. Or moose, meese, moose. Four moose. So each of these is a dollar, this is a dollar, this is a dollar. Let's get a few more quarters. Carl, you want to hit that fast forward button one more time? So we've got a dollar here, we've got another dollar here, another one here, another one here, and here. So, how many dollars do we have so far? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine dollars. Carl, are you getting excited? We only need one more dollar. Now we've got this mix mash of coins up here. I wonder if they add up to a dollar, because if they do, Carl, we're in business. Let's count them out. So the big ones are 25 cents. So 25 and 25 make 50. Now we can start adding some dimes here and start skip counting by 10. So 50, 60, 70. And now we've got to skip count by fives. So 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95 and each of these little brown ones which up here in Canada we don't have these anymore but down in the states and all in a lot of other places in the world they have these things called the pennies and each penny is worth one cent so one of these one nickel rather is five pennies so we have one two three four five which is the same as a nickel which is exactly what we needed to make one more dollar and mr curly curl we are in business because we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten dollars and how much was the super suit it was ten dollars <laughs> Carl, i know you're getting excited we, we gotta calm down because we gotta finish our math adventure before we can go uh, order your super suit for you. Um, but you know what? This was a lot of coins. This was a lot of coins for us to count. And I wonder if there's a way for us to double check. I'm sure you guys have a strategy at home that's a little bit different. And I would love to hear all about it. Let me hear it. That's a really cool strategy. I think that's really interesting. You know what? I have a friend who's really good at these types of things. And I'm gonna give him a call and see that he has a different strategy as well. His name is Adam. I wonder if he's gonna pick up. I notice it's been ringing for a very long time. It's connecting. Hello? Hello, Adam. Hello. Oh, there you are. Hey, man. How's it going? Good. I was worried you were ghosting me there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are you up to this evening? You know, we're sitting here with our piggy bank that we noticed was pretty full, trying to figure out how to get it open. No way. We are doing the same thing. Curly Carl brought his piggy bank down. And you know that super suit that he's been saving up for? Yeah, 
Uh, it's on sale for $10 right now. So he wanted to crack wow. open his piggy bank and see how much money he had. I think he has enough. I think. But I want to know, how are you going to count your coins when you finally get into that piggy bank? Yeah, well, I was just going to count them. But, I mean, you're the kindergarten teacher. What are you going to do? Well, I was thinking about what my kindergarten friends would do. And I know that we love to group things. So I know they would sort them by the type of coin first before they counted it. If we counted the nickels that were sorted, that's like counting by fives. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. You know what? And they love, they do the same for the dimes. They love counting by tens. That's one of their favorite things to do. And we can and add them all together and we know how much we have. That's awesome. That's what we're going to do. You guys have given us so much to think about. I love your strategy. Thank you so much. We did something very similar, but we left off with a big group of pennies and quarters and nickels. We weren't sure quite how to do, deal with them, but I think your strategy will help us out. So let's give that a shot. Thanks, guys. Have a great evening. Excellent. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 So, we're, let's have a look at what we can do a little bit differently. So, what they said was they're going to take all of the dimes. So, we have 40 dimes and two more. So, we have 42 dimes. And if each one is a group of 10, that means we have 420 cents or $4.20. But you can't see that, can you? There we go. That's a bit better. If we take all of the nickels, we had 20 nickels and then five more. So that means we have one full dollar and then 25 cents. So one, 25. Let me adjust that one more time and make it so that my two doesn't quite look like a six. Now with the quarters, we had one, two, three, four, eight, 12, 16, 17, 18 quarters or we had four dollars and fifty cents four dollars and fifty cents and then finally we had a few pennies and I'm spreading this out really far so it's hard to get it all onto the frame here I'm gonna stick these pennies down to the back end excuse me Carl pennies coming through here comes the penny train and we have five cents over here zero zero Five. So, how are we going to add all of these numbers up? Hmm. Carl, do we want to start with the dollars or do we want to start with the pennies? Or the cents? Carl wants to start with the dollars. He likes going big or going home. Let's see. So, let's start. We've got four here. And four make eight. And one more makes nine. And a zero. Well, that's still nine. So, we have nine dollars. Don't worry, Carl. We still might find that we have $10, even though it says 9 right now. Let's see. Let's start in with the, the cents now. 50 and 25 makes 50, 60, 70, and 5 more. 75, 75. And then we're going to skip count 10 more. 75, 85, 95. And 5 more pennies makes 100 cents, which is one more full dollar. So we're going to add that to our 9. So we have $10. Exactly. Can I draw a dollar sign upside down? Kind of. <laughs> so, Carl, we did it. We found that you have exactly enough to buy your Iron Man suit. I wonder what else we could buy with $10. Hmm, let's see. I could buy some power gloves. That's $8. And then maybe I'll get some broccoli, because I love broccoli. And that's nine dollars and you know what some ice cream some super ice cream for dessert so that's my ten dollars what would you do with your ten dollars if you had ten dollars like carl what would you buy from the supermarket so that's it we solved we completed our math adventure today Woo! all right so we learned a lot about coins. We learned a lot about skip counting and grouping. We even learned a bunch of different ways that we can make the number of the day 100. So I guess there's only one more thing to do, and that's to play our goodbye song. I guess I gotta go. go, go, go. But I'll see you next time. It was great. We had a blast. We had some fun doing math, and I can't wait to see you 
next time. See you next time, everybody. Au revoir.